think tanks, brilliant thinkers who have made women's rights a reality in India. All these women here are trailblazers, they are heterodox and they are champions of social causes. They wake us up from our social talker and help us redefine womanhood, redefine a new India, a new model. Thank you so much for being here with us for our panel on gender inequality, men are from Mars and women from subjugation. Shalke, you're a household face. You've been with Star Network and we've seen you anchor the biggest TV show. Uh, you have been involved in very, very male-dominated professions, both as a TV journalist and also in politics. And you've broken the glass ceiling and had your own share of injustices. You have been denied to speak at the Jamia seminar. You have been accused and labeled a passion politician. How do you deal with this? And how, what way do you see ahead for all of us? And especially in, in the political arena, do you think women are still a marginalized minority? Thank you so much for coming on that service. Thank you all of you for inviting me and for all of you for this wonderful initiative. Um, yes, definitely there is a there is a glass ceiling, and uh, it's not there, it's not even glass now. I mean, it's, it's quite visible, but there are lots of cracks, and I think a lot of women have made those cracks. <coughs> more and more cracks have to be shattered. The pink ceiling is there, and it often becomes like a pink collar of it. Beyond a stage, you can't get any further away. In politics, I must say that only privileged women, uh, or I, I don't mean any disrespect, but yes, women who come from privileged classes, uh, wives, slash widows, slash daughters, slash daughters in law, do find it easy access to corridors of power. I don't see many women that grassroots workers or women who rely purely on their own measure and their own talent and their own strength. Um, and definitely women who break stereotypes, who call out uh, um, the popular sentiments, so to speak, are considered troublemakers. So, you know, we really become personas, non grata, so more often than not. It's, it's pretty tough. I mean, I come from a Sunni Muslim background, as I said earlier, from Kanpur. So it's, it's, it's there at, at every, you know, it's like a daily jihad, you know, a daily struggle that you have to go through. Right from the time when it's presumed that, uh, you know, the Zanana Khana and the Mandana Khana, you make the distinction. So right from the time when you're young and you want to speak, there's so many distinctions and so much discrimination that happens on the basis of their anatomy. So somewhere in the, the anatomy, you know, what your body, represents uh, this agenda determines how you have to think, how you are expected to speak, and how much you are allowed to dream. So there is a ceiling everywhere, there is walls everywhere. So your job becomes tougher, really. If you come from those conservative backgrounds to break walls and one after the other, and then where there's a vertical uh, where there's a uh, vertical or horizontal. So it is a tough call. And yes, all the biases which I thought existed in my family, all the uh, words of wisdom that were bandied around by Ammi and Khala and Mahmoud, I thought that was a thing of Kanpur and Mahmoud's culture. But once you go out there to the big media houses of Delhi and Mumbai, you say, hey, now I've, I've gotten through my mass comm exam, I'm here to make a difference. You realize that a lot of those stereotypes still stick with you, they still break you. And at every stage, you have to call them down and be honest with yourself and deal with the generation. <coughs> be honest. Because a lot of privilege also comes from being a woman. So if you talk about proper gender equity, you have to be honest about it, to your own. And also not use being a woman as a card to success, as a passport and access, for access. And deal with it with a lot of honesty. Talking of stereotypes, Nandini, you have smashed stereotypes, archaic beliefs, and chase your dreams. At the tender age of 21, you were with Cosmo, and life could not have been a bed of roses. 
Many wrongly label the magazine as a fluff magazine only for the creepy layer. But a very often ignored fact is when you talk about in your issues about women's safety, about LGBT rights, about gender parity. Those aspects are never brought up. And I quote you where you say the one thing that I think only Cosmo brings to the table is to actually stand up for what you want. How have you seen the urban woman and her taste change over this long term of your I think, first of all, I wouldn't call fashion fluff at all. I, I, I think fashion beauty, what you do in a certain way, is such a critical part of our life. It's a huge sort of business. So, fluff, no. Um, yes, we talk constantly about women's rights. We talk about confidence. One of our personal sort of beliefs is to teach women, is to teach their minds to really go after what they all want. What has changed in the last couple of years Everything has um, uh, changed for good and for uh, bad. I think one of the things that we've seen change in the last couple of years is, is like of course, Instagram coming in. And Instagram making all of us feel hugely conscious about how we all look. Um, I don't think we've ever lived in a time where we have cared this much about our skin and our hair and our sort of body shape, etc. This is making us hugely sort of depressed, so the anxiety levels are on the right rise. And I think that what will actually happen next is to work towards caring slightly less about our contour, our brows, our hair, and our perfect body shape, etc. What has also changed, which is great, is choice. Women getting to finally choose, men of course too, but women getting to choose. Today, you can choose who you date. You can go on Hinge, Tinder, Bumble, blah, 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 and you can actually date people. You could not date, date people 10 years back. You would either you, you, you pick this, this like one man, better or worse, you're with him, or you're sort of parents speak in three, you can actually date. You can choose how you think. You can no longer be told that you have to think A, B, C, because let's say that you are being told this is right, this is wrong, you can actually check it out, you can have other sort of voices coming up, and you can actually tell yourself that this is right, this is wrong. What has also changed is the choice to actually speak up. I think that with the sort of internet coming in, all of us have our, have our own voice. We can talk about things that hurt us, bother us, things that need to change. So I think that choice, and the choice to actually finally choose is one of the biggest changes that I've seen in the last 10 years. Fabulous. Minimum. Being the daughter of an eighth industrialist and a Padma Bhushan poetess mother, you have been privy to many secrets. And I believe you brought them out in uh, your books, whether it was your father's biography or Kasturba's diary. Every woman also has their own little secret. And we often find men who come, we do all the work, we toil, and they come, and we are put on the back burner, and they take the front seat. They, they face the world with the same team as ours. When will unsung heroines get the spot, spotlight? because I am not a feminist. Deceptively, my books appear making me out to be a feminist. But I am very happy being a woman and being, if you like, the fair sex. And today, on this panel, like if it was a school question, and we said, which is the odd one out? Well, certainly me, my hand, the odd one Because I am so gobsmacked by Shobha on the panel, and looking at her face and her a preserved body and skin in her seventies, next seventh decade of her life. But I hope that when I reach her decade, I have this Martian coming into my life. I don't care if I'm from Venus or he's from Mars, but I want to be like her and I want that Martian decade. <laughs> coming back to the discussion today, women are from subjugation. I want to know and I want to reflect on this. That when did this situation happen? 
have just read a very fascinating book on the power of that, greatness of that, which is replete with, uh, with tales from Hindu mythology, in which women were all powerful. They were the seductresses, the temperances, they could choose who they wanted to sexually engage with, they could elect to have multiple sexual partners, they could have women and children from whoever they liked. They were the empowered and somewhere down the line, something changed. Uh, Simone de Beauvoir wrote about second sex sometime in the 50s. And uh, about 70 years ago, Katie asked me, go to point, which is like horror. And uh, I want to set the pace today for this uh, talk by reading out that poem, if you will allow it's a vibrant, planning call for all women to rise and walk shoulder to shoulder with the men. It's a title for it. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll just read the choice of select four stanzas from it. All right. बेजान खिलौनों से रह जाती है, तब की सांसों की हालत से बिगड़ जाती है, पांव जिस राह में रखती है, फिसल जाती है, वन के सीमा हर एक जर्द में ढल जाती है, सीस के आँख की सांचे में भी ढलना है तुझे, कुछ मेरी जान, मेरे साथ ही चलना है तुझे। زندگی جہد میں ہے سبر کے کابو میں نہیں نفظ ہستی کا لہو کام دے آنسو میں نہیں اڑنے کھلنے میں ہے نتک خم ایسو میں نہیں جنت ایک اور ہے جو مرد کے پہلو میں نہیں اس کی آزار روش پر کی مچلنا ہے تجھے اٹھ میں جان میں ساتھی چلنا ہے गोशे गोशे में सुलगती है चिताते लिए फर्ज का केस बदलती है तजाते लिए कहर है तेरी हर एक नज़र हटाते लिए जहर की जहर है दुनिया की आवाज़े लिए रुक बदल का अगर पूल ना उठना है तुझे कुछ नहीं जान तेरे साथ ही चलना है कदर अब तक तेरी तारीफ ने जानी ही नहीं तुझ में शोले भी हैं, बस अश्क दिशानी ही नहीं, तो हकीकत भी है दिलचस्प, कहानी ही नहीं, तेरी हस्ती भी एक चीज है, जवानी ही नहीं, अपनी तारीफ का उन्मान बदलना है तुझे, कुछ नहीं जानते साथ में जाओ, तोड़कर रस का बुत बंद है तो आमन से निकल, जो भी इस زوف اشرت سے نکل بہم نظافت سے نکل نفس کے کھینچے ہوئے ہر کائے عظمت سے نکل قید بن جائے محبت تو محبت سے نکل راہ کی خار کی کیا بل کی تو چلنا ہے تجھے کچھ نہیں جان میرے ساتھ ہی چلنا ہے تجھے اور آخری ہے تو فلاتون و رستون تو زہرہ پرہین تیرے قبضے میں غردوں تیری ٹھوکر میں زمین ہاں اٹھا جنگ اٹھا پائی مقدر سے جمین میں بھی رکھنے کا نہیں وقت بھی رکھنے کا نہیں لڑ کھڑائے کی کہاں تک کی سمجھنا ہے تجھے اٹھ میری جان میرے ساتھ ہی چلنا ہے اور اس سٹوری گوز میں تیفی ریسائٹیڈ اس some 70 years ago at some airfield, the Shokata saw him and heard him recite it, and that's when she decided, this is the man I'm going to marry. Anyway, so coming back to men uh, are from Mars and women are from South Asia. But I am a proud woman, born in a highly misogynistic gender bias. I'm the first child of my father's sixth wife. And my mother, although was a little teen, she was extremely biased towards her nature. Even then, although I competed with them at every level, when life panned out, I decided 
that the best I can do is what I'm doing is being on I think we are the power of grace. I don't want to compete with men, and I don't think they can compete with me. I want to be the fair and sex. I want to be moved, admired, treated with, with care and gentleness. The only thing I want them to do for one day is try to be a neighbor and produce a child. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm quite happy being a woman. If you want to call it subjugation, by all means do. Um, and I think I have achieved enough in my life to say that I'm proud, proud woman of the world. Uh, the secret is that uh, 
every woman, every mother, every daughter has to be encouraged with the ability to stand up against the ocean. Uh, the day we can conduct that power to our children, if we don't withstand this, we will not get it. The more we tolerate it, the more it's going to be So the answer to that is that we have to empower ourselves in it and uh, pass that power to our children so that we uh, teach them how to stand this. And we also create a whole uh, generation of sensitive men. If they are sensitive to their sisters, to their mothers, to their wives, this whole thing about emotional and physical abuse shall die. The question which torments the psyche of any self-respecting woman is this vicious cycle of oppression and subjugation. We face it, we exercise it, it somewhere gets indoctrinated in us. So it's this absolute vicious cycle. And I don't know when our mothers, our daughters are going to shrug off from these facades and these shadows. Nandri, what's your take on it? Um, okay, so I think that various things we have, we have just spoken of. One of the things that really sort of bothers me is how we teach women not to be so ambitious. I think when you call a man ambitious, it's a very good trait. He is strong and he knows what he wants and he will quite get it. Women, that is a very dirty word. Right? Ambition means that you are this witch who is going to go and leave family off to one side, etc. etc. Since we're talking about class, Ceiling, and we're talking about breaking and shattering them. Um, lots of women, I mean, they've been, I think the most recent uh, finding was that women tend to reach up to CEO level and then they actually quit, you know, which is very, I mean, which is why we have very, very many female CEOs. We have to teach our sisters, daughters, friends to be sort of ambitious, right, and not to treat it as a bad word, but to say, listen, um, it is not that you are just you just going to work, right? So allowed to work. Oh, you know what a nice husband he is. He has so allowed his wife to go and work. It's such an awful term. Secondly, mentorship. Women can be best the best to mentors. They just tend to not. Um, women have said that they would least likely want to work under these sort of female boss. Um, all of them would actually prefer to work with men. This is so sad. Um, women do not help women grow. So what they found is that women will help men grow because someone, they will help someone super duper junior, but anybody who is too close and who can actually come up, they will not help them. How can all of us change it? Mentorship. Um, if you are good at anything, business, um, you've got certain skill sets, I think that if all of us were to take our up as our own personal challenge and say, listen, I will let my friends, sisters, colleagues, women at work, let me be a good mentor to them. Because we can talk endlessly about this, right? We can go on endlessly about, you know, this is sad, women have been super subjugated, blah, blah, blah. But I think that we are the crux and the core to really go out and make that change. Something that we are doing at my, at my work now is to actually bring young women together and to teach them skills that that actually help them grow, that coupled with that fearlessness that, yeah, you should be boss, you should be CEO. I think if you could work with a bit of this kind of that, it would help us all tremendously. Yeah, I have to make a small point. You know, when we talk about uh, patriarchy or patriarchal values, let us know that this is not men versus women at all. So women are as much a repository of the same patriarchal feudal values as men. And there are many men who are far more gender sensitive or gender neutral uh, in the way they, they, they are in their house, in their offices, and in our United States and the countries. So you don't necessarily have to be a woman to be a uh, better mentor to other women, so to speak. So it is gender neutral, so to speak. Gender equity is gender neutral. That's the point of the way. And secondly, and most importantly, uh, is, is, the, is the feudal bias that we all have uh, something we want to address. Because how are we with each other? That's what uh, Nandini was just talking about. Uh, I mean, I would, I'm so many of my male bosses have been so much better than my female bosses. And so there you go. And then we look at, uh, did it really help the women of Pakistan to have been able to as a prime minister? Or Indra Gandhi as a prime minister? Women particularly on the gender issue. 
or Sheikh Hasina or Malala Sir. And what about Golda Maya, who did not have any uh, uh, familiar background, so to speak, it came as one of one merit. So you have to also look at that, yeah, is it okay just to have the face of power be that of a woman? But handsome is what handsome does. What are the policies? What are the views? How is the idea of gender equity ingrained in you, which is being projected and manifested in the way you conduct yourself in private or public life? That is the true uh, parameter, the true litmus test where it comes to. So just being a woman or being a man and being able for that is a shade right, I dare say. Yeah, very well said. So men of quality support gender equality. like you were talking about choices. So this, this mindset of the society around us may have changed just in the metro of just a few people. When is this phenomena of not being judged, not being labeled? When, why do we have to have Lakshman Rekhas with that drawn for us? And why are we compared to these Sati Savaji when we are not? Um, I think that um, we actually choose what to pick since you're talking about that. We actually choose what to pick out of the, the whole text, right? We can choose to be Durga, we can choose to be a baby with many, many hands, we can be next to money, we can do various things, or we can choose to let that bit about Sati Savitri so soaking and pressing the God's feet, etc. But to answer your question about judgment, right? I think that all of us judge and we have been judged. Um, so what was if I talk about trolls, um, we've all been judged the way that we look and what we do, etc, etc, etc. Um, personally, and this is what, what, what I do, whenever I feel that I'm being judged, I actually work very, very hard to change the, the people or the stories that are so around. There's this great quote that we are all the combination of the five people that we spend the most time with. Yeah, um, and I think that I consciously seek out stories of great strength, women who are, who, who have beaten the odds, women who have done so incredible things, and that actually feeds me, fuels me, and it makes all of these little judgments seem like they're absolutely futile, right? So I think that um, these consciously try to, try to be sort of around stronger women, try to surround yourself with just greater thoughts, you know, and ultimately just let judgments be, you know, I mean, I, I did not spend too much time thinking about it. And ladies and gentlemen, we're also joined to be in the session by a you know, poet and a social worker, who has just joined us. Thank you so much for our Basically, my question to you, you come from a political family, yet you're a poetess in your own right. Growing up, did you ever feel consciously or subconsciously we give power to our men? Patriarchy has been ingrained into us. It's in our subconscious. And despite having a legal right, we move from our father's house to our husband's house. Nothing is ever ours. When is this going to change? So, so there is a Miko Namaskar. Shuk Sabina. Manchia seems to be a ये विषय बहुत ही गंभीर है और बहुत पुराना है। अभी तक दुनिया की जो आधा दुनिया की आधी आबादी है, आधा समाज है, वो आधे समाज से केवल इसी बात के लिए लड़ रहा है कि हमें आपका हिस्सा जो अपना हिस्सा है वो आपके बराबर का वो नहीं मिला और ये प्रश्न केवल भारत का नहीं है ये प्रश्न हर मुल्क का है हर जाति का है हर धर्म का है आप हम किसी भी धर्म से आएंगे क्योंकि मैं मैंने दो धर्मों को बहुत करीब से देखा है मैं जन्मी एक ब्राह्मण पंडित फैमिली में और मेरी शादी होती है 
एक मुस्लिम घराने में तो मैंने दो समाजों को तो कम से कम अच्छी तरह से पढ़ लिया है समझ लिया है लेकिन केवल इन दो समाजों को नहीं मैं सोचती हूँ कि दुनिया के हर हर समाज हर धर्म हर भाषा में ये प्रश्न बहुत गंभीर है और बहुत ही बहुत अहम प्रश्न है ये हमारे लिए कि आखिर स्त्री को नारी को कब उसका अधिकार मिलेगा जो उसका अधिकार ऑलरेडी है ये ऐसा नहीं है कि हमें हमें मानना है कि प्लीज हमें भी उतने अधिकार दे दो जितने कि पुरुष के पास है हम उन अधिकारों के साथ जन्मे हैं हम बराबरी से जन्मे हैं पुरुषों के पास बहुत सारे बहाने हैं एक्सक्यूजेस हैं कि तुम फिजिकली फिट नहीं हो शारीरिक रूप से पुरुष से कम ताकत रखती हो लेकिन ये गलत है ये इसलिए गलत है क्योंकि एक स्त्री है जो पुरुष को जन्म देती है पुरुष कितनी अच्छी बात है कि स्त्री वो सारी पीड़ा लेके पुरुष और स्त्री दोनों को जन्म देती है उसके बाद भी वो पुरुष कहता है कि तुम हमसे कम ताकत हो उतनी ही ताकत में उतने ही शरीर से स्त्रियां डबल ट्रिपल मेरे ख्याल से चौगुना काम कर लेती है और जब से बड़ी लिखी हो गए बाहर स्वावलंबी बनने लगी तब से तो और ज्यादा क्योंकि तो बाहर का काम भी नहीं करना है घर का काम भी करना है ऑफिस भी संभालना है मैथमेटिकली भी काम करना है साइंटिस्ट भी उन्हें बनना है उन्हें सब कुछ करना है और बच्चे भी पालने हैं और वो उन्हें केवल मैं अध्यापिका भी हूँ इसलिए पहले तीन महीने की मैटर्निटी लीव मिलती थी अब छः महीने की मिलती है इसका मतलब हमारे शरीर छः महीने में बिल्कुल स्वस्थ हो जाता है दोबारा काम करने के लिए और वो सारे काम करने के लिए और इतने नहीं कुछ वर्ष बाद फिर से जब काम करते हैं तो फिर हमारा शरीर इतना ही स्वस्थ होता है तो हमारे पास तो बहुत ताकत है बहुत ज्यादा हम पुस्तकों में लिखते हैं कि हम दुर्गा है काली है और माता के नौ रूप है हमारे लेकिन क्या पुरुष वर्ग सचमुच में ये समझता है अगर ऐसा सचमुच में समझता है तो ये जो नवरात्र होते हैं उसमें मेरे ख्याल से अगर हम अपने घर की माँ और बेटी बहन अगर इन सब की ही पूजा करें तो मेरे ख्याल से हमें मंदिरों में जाना माँ का सम्मान कीजिए बेटी का सम्मान कीजिए देवी की पूजा हो जाए रेनु जी मैं आपकी बात से पूरी तरह से इतफा करती हूँ लेकिन मैं एक बात कहना चाहती हूँ कि जब भी औरतों का जिक्र होता है हम वही जो तीन चार जो डब्बे हैं उनमें महिला बना देते हैं माँ और बहन और बेटी और मुझे लगता है कि इससे निकल कर आने की जरूरत है और उम्र को एक औरत एक कोई भी है एक दोस्त भी है एक साथी भी है एक आंदोलनकारी भी है उसके अंदर ये सब है तो हम क्योंकि इतने इतनी रोज पे महदूर करते हैं औरतों को और वो उनके लिए प्रश्न रेखा बन जाता है तो मुझे लगता है नया रोज जो हो वो खुद का अपना बनाया हो बिल्कुल तभी तो तभी तो स्वाभावी
Um, and to be great. So I think that if there's just one thing that I would ask them to be more of, a girl was fabulous anyway, <laughs> is to just be a little bit braver, is to not let somebody else steal your power. Women give it away very, very quickly to a man, to a boss, you know, because we have been raised to be quieter, to be careful, and to not be saying very, very many things. Hold that power. This is yours. Use it to just become possible and be great. What a talk, Fabulous. Charlie. Me to mother, to daughter. <coughs> but, but the message would be to all actually, because I think men and women together constitute the society. And I think we need more men uh, as collaborators, as friends, as colleagues, as brothers, as partners to move ahead. So, how should we raise our boys and how should we? So, I, I, I think, you know, uh, but also when you have a say completely, if you can't just for that, we are just here, but he's just a big version of that. So it's just to get diaries and get them out. So it's not that 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 it's not. Now, when a father is right, I am the eldest. So, he is not going to get it. So, he is 
because you have nowhere else to go. That to me and that's power of being able to say, I am done and I will not take this. It only comes when you can run your fellow. Thank you. Just a pause for a moment. Yes, and then she's just Hello, excuse me. Can I just It's good 
for men and women both. If you start looking at, today I was listening to the parliamentary debates this morning and I can tell you that, and I looked at the agenda. And why I am bringing this issue because women's leadership is one of the agenda that I think you all must force. You must work very strongly about how many, you look at the whole agenda, except for the Sagrisi bill, this parliament is going to discuss nothing about women. Nothing about culture. You know, I think we when, we, when we vote, we have to take responsibility. We have to hold them accountable. Whether it is a poisonous air, or whether for me from Tawana Nehru to Australia, it is taking me two hours to reach this. Really, two hours to reach this venue. I sent my location to one of the organizers to see how the car is not moving. They're just stopping at every year's uh, place. So I think that this is the situation we are living in. <coughs> We can organize everything for ourselves, but not clean air. We can organize everything for ourselves, but not ourselves. So this parliament has to discuss these issues. They must come forward. And these are our issues, the issues of us, women and our children. And we should hold them accountable for that. So I have a feeling that unless it is coming from men and boys, unless they will start saying no, every form of discrimination and oppression, not so not me. You know, a lot of it in 40 years of my life, I have a a lot of people say, oh, not me. It doesn't happen to me. So I feel that unless we all will start doing that, and we start holding ourselves accountable, responsible, and mostly this parliament accountable and responsible, I don't think things will change that fast. I don't think they're going to meet the kind of future that women and children and so our daughters should be Thank you. They could not so have been in it. They could not have been a better setting, a house full of eager and enthusiastic audience. And look at my panelists over here, all taught bearers. Thank you so much for being here. I'd just like to quote Atticus. They were not looking for a knife, they were looking for a soul. All of you beautiful women make strong look invincible and make brave look really, really beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. 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 Th